let me introduce myself. I'm Krishna. So I was sitting in those seats uh, a month ago. So uh, I completed PGPDM batch five last week. So we got our convocations and certificates last week. So I am basically one of you. So who attended this course just before you? That's it. So why I am here today and what I am going to discuss? Uh, again, not about the title that how to find a job in analytics. It's nothing that I am going to tell or uh, I know how to tell or something like that. But I am here to share my experience on uh, you know uh, my job search experience, what I was facing and what kind of reality it is out there and I am sure many of you are going to go through that. So I thought it could be helpful for uh, you, know, you so you can avoid making the mistakes what I have done uh, in my job search. So that's why I am here for and uh, uh, yeah again so it's all like my personal experiences, nothing universal and whatever I am telling it's not the global scenario. So whatever I am telling it's just my personal experiences. So, uh, if I am like, uh, correct, which module are you guys in now? So, you are in uh, completed machine learning module, you have seen module 3, right? You are perfect. So, so, how many of you already started looking for jobs or started preparing resume or uh, you think you will wait for? Great. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, 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 great. Great, actually that is a very good sign and, uh, and that is actually right, like you should start preparing or building your resume right from there and uh, you don't need to wait till the course to get completed or uh, wait till your submissions and convocation to get completed. So that's exactly the way that even I followed. I started building my resume and let me tell you like what are the opportunities, what's next? So this is the question that most of us face, right? What's, what's next? Why are we pursuing this course at the first place, right? So my intention was to do a career transformation for myself and uh, uh, you know, enhance my career opportunities and uh, whatever I was pursuing, I definitely want to put into practice. So, that is what I, my intention of pursuing this course, were, right? So, I had these options and uh, these options are good for everyone. Like, you can look for an internal project with your, within your own organization if they are already doing analytics, that is a very good start. Or else, uh, you can work as a data science freelancer, there are pretty good number of sites. Uh, main things can be Upwork or Freelancer.com, so you can uh, be a data science freelancer or you can again pursue higher education uh, up to you or you can become a data science consultant, start your own data product company, there are like many budding AI startups coming up like, so it's all like how much uh, you want to push yourself and uh, how you want to place yourself and how you want to pursue the career, right? So, and uh, I selected this path of looking for a job opportunity. The reason, first I tried the first step, uh, looking for an internet project within my own organization because uh, I was working in an analytics project, uh, not exactly data science but a descriptive analytics project for some time. Uh, but then there are like many other opportunities outside my project where they are implementing data science. So I went asked, uh, you know, if there, are, if there is a chance that I can get a roll off from, from my project, which is a challenging thing for many of you I guess, right? So getting a roll off from the current project. So I started asking for a roll off uh, from my manager from pretty long time because I know that it cannot happen overnight. So uh, in February I got a confirmation from my manager saying that no we are not going to roll you off for the next one year. So this project whatever you are doing it's going to be there for one year and uh, we don't want to leave you and find another resource and all that so you are not going to go. So that's the clarity that I got at the end of February almost so that's when I thought I should not resort on the first step and go looking for a job out, outside because I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, leave this entire thing and do not want to practice for one more year and then start looking uh, for a data science opportunity. And it doesn't make sense because if I have to wait for one more year, all the things that whatever I am learning will go off. Like, and if you do not put into practice, there is so much you get in a real time uh, experience where you do not have a real time project, but still you can pursue data science very little, uh, very little uh, chance that you get, right? So, I started preparing my resume for the first time. So, for this company I was working for last six years. So, it was a pretty good amount of time that I haven't seen my resume. So, first thing I had to do is like I had to restructure all the things and there are so much that have changed over the last six years and I had to put in data science skills. So, there is the first step. So, this is why I, uh, you know, started so, first step is resume preparation. So, that is where I started. So, the market has changed a lot for me from last six years when I was not looking for a job. 
uh, there are many things in place that your traditional old resume will not be good enough now, right? So there is something called ATS, which you all have to be aware of that uh, it is an applicant tracking system. So this is a machine readable, uh, you know, applicant tracking system. So all your uh, resumes are now being machine readable, and they give your resume a score at the end. So that's uh, that's what it is. So HRs are not going to look at the swarm of resumes that they get. So basically, ATS gives them score, and then they take a judgment on that whether this score matches the job profile or not. So that's how things are. So my experience says in uh, resume preparation, I first started putting U of C logo because it glorifies your resume a bit, and then uh, all the colors and uh, all little bit of animations and all that. But then I quickly realized, very quickly realized that none of uh, these things are working for me because whenever I started working, uh, sorry, started applying for the job portals and uh, they are not actually reading my profile and in fact that's a very poor format of putting a resume like no logos pictures or irregular alignment so bottom line right so make make it as machine friendly as possible so you you all are now machine learning engineers right so you have completed your course so now you should be knowing like how a machine can read right so keep it as simple and as crisp as pro possible so that is one thing uh, definitely, ATS be aware and uh, size should be less than uh, 5 MB and uh, again, while preparing a resume, there are like a lot of things that you can look out for and resume services are available and uh, you know, these places where you get inspiration from, uh, uh, you know, for resume templates. But one thing I strongly recommend you guys to write down your own resume because that's the way you can, you can understand thoroughly what you are putting on your resume, right? So even whatever you think of, whatever you are putting, Try to get to a proper resume, building it your own, and then get a feedback from experts or anyone else, or else your close ones or dear ones who are uh, who are actively looking for jobs now they know something about it. So that's the step I strongly suggest. Do not take resumes from anyone else. Write it yourself. Each and every point, write it yourself. It's a painstaking step, but that rewards you. And uh, this you keep, uh, you can keep uh, coming back and keep tweaking your resume. And don't do not wait for a uh, for that perfect resume to come out, okay? You just put a base structure and start applying. And then as in the process, you will learn what to tweak and what not to and what is working for you, what not, what's not working for you, all that. So there are some sites which uh, you can refer to. Basically, it is like uh, it gives you a score for your resume. And then uh, there are some tips on resume, what and what not. These are basic things uh, you can uh, get done. And where did I apply? So I'm, I'm, again, I'm not telling like, where you had to apply, but where did I apply? So these are the sites I applied. Naukri, Glassdoor, Indeed, LinkedIn, GitHub, AngelList, literally everywhere. So when you are out there looking for a job, why to restrict or why to be modest? You know, you apply for everywhere. Apply everywhere. Like you never know which companies are listing on which sites. And uh, these are the things what I look for from these uh, websites. Glassdoor is very good for getting reviews and uh, employee reviews of the company and how the things are, or whether you want to really put your investment on this company, looking for a job or not. So Glassdoor is very good at that. And LinkedIn easy apply is very easy to apply, click, 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 and you can just go ahead and apply. Right, and uh, GitHub, AngelList are very good for startup companies. AngelList is especially only for startups, so you will get a lot of startup jobs there. And again, possibilities are not just limited to this. You can look for there, you can clearly see I missed out on uh, Monster. Uh, I realized that when I was preparing this slide. So I missed out on Monster clearly and uh, there are many other ways now you can work. You can work remotely. There are many portals for that. Uh, Remoteok.io, okay we work remotely, all that. So you can work as a, I mean you can look for jobs. It's not that guaranteed that you have a like overwhelming uh, jobs posted out there. But they, those are also the opportunities that you can look for. 